All right, people, we, uh, this is, uh, Keith and Brent. Say hi, Keith. Hey, guys. That's Keith. Um, and then you got Brent here from Pop Dust. And, uh, we just saw Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker last night. Ooh, boy, did we. And, uh, I thought we'd, uh, share our thoughts with you guys. Um, this is going to be a heavy spoiler review. Um, but first... I thought, you know, we can give some of our impressions, mm -hmm. things we like, things we didn't like, uh, and try to do it without spoilers uh, for people that are just, they just really want our opinion. Uh, and then we'll we'll give the a world. warning. Yeah. And and then we'll uh, we'll give like a little warning for when we're going into spoilers and then we'll we'll go we'll go into that territory. So, uh, yeah, without without spoilers, what are your overall impressions like, you know, things what what do you, what do you like about the movie? Okay, I mean, the visuals are obviously the strongest part of the movie. Yeah, I think that's been probably true of the entire sequel trilogy with with Disney, probably Disney Star Wars in general. Yeah. Um, yeah, including they, kn they know how to make it look good. Yeah, and their their creature work has been great. I mean, people have you know shit all over the the prequels for relying too heavily on cgi and i think disney has fully proven that that criticism is is correct they're they're uh the creatures in the new one are i, I mean they're not the most memorable characters necessarily but some of them are just like so charming you can't help but enjoy yourself yeah and they've done a great job with like the droids and whatnot so visuals, and I'd also add in there the the sound design mm -hmm. and and music. Uh, I think they've gotten right in in all of yeah. Disney Star Wars. Um, Mandalorian music is growing on me, and uh, but you know the classic John Williams score. Yeah, um, it, think... it was great. You know what I mean? It wasn't anything like you know. I think I think it's just a given. Like like these these things like we're listing them as positives, but they are sort of givens. Like baseline going into a star wars like i would say the same things about you know attack of the clones right uh, except for the in my opinion way you know over usage of uh, cgi in, in that but rise of skywalker um all right things that do you have more things that you like i mean i i do want to emphasize the visuals a little bit more because i think honestly um some of the visuals in this were maybe my like maybe my favorite Star Wars visuals. Um, there's, there's without giving anything away, there's a new planet that just has a very dark atmosphere and it's really cool. I like it a lot. Um, but yeah, that that's about it. Yeah, I would say for me, um, I, do, I do think the visuals were great. Unfortunately, you know, I, I guess maybe I had my hopes up too high, um, but the the original star wars you know now mm. known as a, as a new hope was revolutionary in how yeah. it looked and i really just thought you know especially after they had a lot of backlash from fans with the last jedi and then you know solo being the first movie to lose money at the box office mm. um i really just thought they were going to pull out all of the stops and like deliver something visually that like we just haven't ever seen before mm. and i don't know that that happened last night like it looked really cool but I, I wanted there to be even if it was just for like one moment like a sequence where at, we, were, we would just leave like holy crap you can do that in film you know and yeah. and you know i i do we do have to see it again we only we only saw it once um but i was a little bit bummed about that but i it's understandable given how much how how short a time they had mm. to put this movie together um after after you know J.J. Abrams was brought back on from the originally planned director and writer, um, and they and that comes across in every aspect of the movie. If you ask me, maybe other than the mm. acting, is yeah. is it seems rushed for sure. Um, I also uh, I, I do just want to add that, like not not to discount what they achieved with a new hope but i do think it was it was a bit easier to you know break new ground visually in uh 1977 or is that, yeah. is that the right year whenever a yeah. new hope came out yep exactly um all right well it's good transition then to things you didn't like <laughs> <laughs> it's 
it's a, it's a lot more territory to cover, unfortunately. Um, I'll say that uh, I'd seen and, and listened to other reviews of the movie that, that were saying that they, they felt like it was uh, like video game plotting, uh, too heavy a reliance on, on like MacGuffins, yeah. and they just kept saying there, there's just too much going on or it feels like several movies packed into one or the fact that, you know, the first act, maybe like the first 40 minutes is just like, tons of cuts and we're going scene to scene to scene and i i kept thinking in my head i was like ah well, what, what does that really mean like you know like i i think it really depends on on how the execution is maybe i'll be fine with them jumping around a lot you know because maybe they're just trying to make this really epic and they, they're going to show us lots of different stuff and i think they did that but there is something i don't know it, not claustrophobic but like uncomfortable or it, some of these cuts and, and everything were like embarrassing i i yeah it was too much to take in but it also just began i began to to not care because mm. every scene was just going to cut and when it got to something else it, it almost to me was beginning to get a little eye rolly because i'm like all right well are, are you serious like yeah. that really just happened like and it seemed like they they had so little time for all the stuff that they were trying to fit mm. in that they had to have characters just like figure out the mystery in like really yeah. quick dialogue exchanges that, that were the dialogue was like all exposition. Yeah, there was no figuring anything out. It yeah. was just being told we've figured it out. And no one questions it. Everyone, you know, here's the here's the new information that someone just magically has now and accepts it and moves forward with that new information. It was it was very weird yeah um that was really hard for me to get behind um so i think i think it's just the amount of information that they gave us um and i'm also gonna say it's not really a spoiler but the carrie fisher stuff i don't, mm. I don't know how you felt about that i know and everybody knows that they were in a really rough position mm -hmm. on how to handle her but yeah. i i, I gotta say i can't believe that ryan johnson went through the last jedi without allevi Did, alleviating that problem. I yeah, the fact that he didn't do like a rewrite cuz that movie was unlike this one was was finished pretty far in advance from the release. Um to the extent that I I personally think that they could have gone back and just rewritten some things mm. and had her pass away in that movie. Yeah. Um I'm glad that her character is around and there is some cool things about her character and like the, the relationship as it's developed or as we're told it's developed basically with, yeah. with her and Ray. Um, it could have been a lot worse for sure. But, but I got to say that it pulled me out of it because, mm -hmm. and again, this isn't giving anything away, but I'm somebody that's like, I've seen all the deleted scenes many times from a force awakens. And so the mm. when she when she's talking, I know exactly what it's pulled from, and it just seems very weird. It seems almost yeah. like an SNL sketch or something to me. Where, and and also like they don't have that much to pull from, so just some of the interactions are really kind of awkward, and you can tell that they're they're structuring the scenes around what lines they have of hers to say. Yeah, and it it feels to me almost like in Home Alone. <laughs> when when he plays parts of this movie to like interact with with people like breaking in or whatever or, yeah that's or the pizza guy that's accurate and that's what it felt like to me because it would be like oh well that's just a droid saying that and then we cut to Carrie Fisher like never underestimate a droid oh and it's like never underestimate <laughs> oh. all right that is that's a little bit of a spoiler uh okay, never yeah. underestimate a droid guys spoiler don't underestimate don't underestimate them. I just that's also just a weird phrase because wouldn't it's you stupid. exactly estimate a, a droid? Like well, it's, you programmed them. Like <laughs> I don't know. And there are also like Hopefully somebody estimated at some point. A droid is not like one thing. Like there are hundreds or thousands of different models of droid that all do different work. I don't know. It just seemed it, it, it seemed like a really weird 
a really weird proclamation to make. Yeah. The the thing for me was that it was pulling me out of the movie mm -hmm. because every time that she's on screen, I had to be yeah. like, was, my brain would just like my brain just knew that she wasn't actually there. It was weird because I've seen those scenes before, yeah. and uh, visually it was, I thought pretty good. I I they did a really good job yeah. of the visually. There was maybe only like one or two yeah. like. Flashes. Small moments where I was like, that's something. Like the Uncanny Valley. Yeah. Um, but overall, it was pretty good. And on that, I said, let's move into spoilers, dude. Let's just get right into yeah. it. Um, for people that haven't seen the movie yet, if you don't want any spoilers, get off of this now. Exit. Close your computer. Um, you know, talk to your kids, whatever whatever it is. Maybe but go spoilers. See yeah, go see the movie. And then and then come back and start right here, timestamp uh, mm -hmm. wherever mm -hmm. we are, and uh, let's see we're we're about like eleven minutes in let's say so come back and uh, we're gonna start spoilers in three, two, one. Snape kills Dumbledore. <laughs> Can't uh, believe that. All right, well, the most obvious one, which isn't really a spoiler, is that Palpatine is back. Yeah, they tell you that right in the opening crawl. The opening crawl, in my opinion, I'm, and I'm not even going to structure this. So I'm just, let's just go like free form, mm -hmm. uh, like whether it's things that we like or didn't like. The opening crawl, I thought, and I've heard other people say this, probably the worst of the <laughs> entire saga. It's very short, and instead of like catching you up right. to or kind of giving us like an idea of just like doing what, some world building, yeah, like you know, what is some some good information to have. Like, no, that that's not it at all. And if you don't read it, then you're going to be really shocked. But even reading it, I mean, the first line is like Palpatine's back. Yes, and you just, have, you just speak, have to go right? with that. And they don't explain it. Um, you know, there's like little allusions that they mm -hmm. make. He, he recycles his line pretty early on that he that he says in uh, Revenge of the Sith, which is like uh, the, there are certain abilities and the dark side of the force that, yeah. that some consider unnatural. And... Uh, Yep, uh, Palpatine's back, and then we just kind of blast into it. It's really short. It's a really short crawl, but screw it. I don't even. I don't really care about the the crawls that much. Right. I just thought that this one. It's it's just kind of a tradition at this point. Yeah, and uh, the the other thing that I'll say, and then I'm gonna turn it over to you, um, is that you know now that we're into spoilers, uh, I had this movie spoiled for me, and I'm pissed off about it because. All of the leaks were completely true. And I'm talking ones from like months ago. And I just think that's really crappy on the part of like the, the studio and everything. Like, how does that happen? Because like, yes, I I did choose to seek out and read those. But I remember when The Last Jedi was coming out, there was like everybody's theories and like quote unquote leaks and none of them turned out to be true. I don't think, you know, I'm sure somebody out there on the internet could prove me wrong, but I don't think there really was leaks from that movie other than information that they might have intentionally let out a bit. Mm -hmm. But, uh, man, I'm telling you, every single beat from her healing this, like, worm creature right. to, you know, uh, exact lines of dialogue, I knew months ago. And that was really disappointing. Um, it seemed like in a few places there was like a little variation, uh, but that variation is so obviously part of like the rewrites and last minute <laughs> restructuring that they did. You know, there was rumors out there that they had maybe like six different endings, all that were slightly tweaked. Mm. And I feel like it was tangible where they had made those tweaks. The most, uh, telling part for me was, um, when... Lando is talking to that new character, I think, uh, Jana. Is that her name? Um, I'm not sure. I didn't like her. I didn't care about her. I mean, she was fine. Her acting was was good and whatnot, but why? You're talking about the new Stormtrooper? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, but but when Lando's talking to her at the end, I'm, I'm fairly confident, you know, and this will come out in time, whether it's accurate or not, but in one of the versions of the movie, it was going to be, there was going to be this, you know, B or C plot where where she turns she turns out to be Lando's daughter. Yeah, it, it felt explicitly, and it, it still feels like they're they're kind of implying it here. But the exchange is so awkward the way yeah. that it was cut down because basically Lando's like, hey, 
he Where just sees from? her he just sees her and it's like it's really weird like he's hitting on her mm-hmm. so like if the implication is that it is his daughter it's really weird yeah. if the implication is that she's not his daughter it's still weird because she's like a third of his age but yeah. but he so he goes he goes where are you from and she says i, I don't know and then he's like well he how about later. how about we find out in like a very Lando way, but yeah. very flirty, and I was just cringing all over. That whole scene was cringy, dude. They gave they gave Chewie a medal from A New Hope. It's like, dude, why why are you? <laughs> you don't need to explain this stuff. Like that was the big issue with Solo is that they were just explaining so much stuff, in, including how he got the last name Solo. That like we didn't need explaining. We actually didn't want explaining. Um, I'm pretty sure. In other media, like in books and stuff like that, Chewie does get a medal, and it's like they've already like you know retconned it and explained it. So uh, you assume that that medal that he received at the end, I think from Maz Kanata, was probably Hans, but it's like why? It's so obviously like a response to yeah. people that are like, "How come Chewie didn't get a yeah. get a get a medal?" Which is like a meme, and they. They were like, oh, well, well, let's put that in. And we're just like, stop. Like, I I was cringing at that moment. It was... I also... I think it's weird that that's what people fixate on from that uh, that metal scene at the end of New Hope rather than um, the fact that it's based on Triumph of the Will, the Nazi propaganda movie. Yeah. That's a little weirder to me than the fact that they skipped Chewie. But, you know, f- fair enough. They should have given Chewie a medal. But also, like, they did this with Rogue One, and I didn't mind it as much with Rogue One because it was about something important and not just cosmetic where they explain how the Death Star had that weakness and why the why uh, the Empire didn't know that it had that weakness. So they, they made that make sense, um, which I guess helped. Not that, not, that, that, not that the New Hope needed any help, but for them to for them to do this with the metal, I just think is really dumb. Yeah. Fan service of the worst kind in like a very, very, very eye rolly way. What's the which which fan service are you talking about? Uh it didn't necessarily I'm I'm not as much of a Star Wars super fan as you, so it maybe didn't stand out to me as much. Um let's see. Uh what wasn't fan service in the movie? <laughs> um, I mean, Palpatine being back, fine. You know what? I'm cool with that. But JJ, so dishonest, like acting like that was always the plan. Like, mm. I don't think so. Yeah. I think maybe if he had done all three movies, then the second movie would have been a bit like the first 40 minutes of this movie, but right. an entire movie. And in, in it, he may have like, like wanted to foreshadow something bigger badder you know because i remember seeing force awakens and a lot of people were theorizing at that time like because they kept asking who's snoke who's right. snoke and a lot of people did guess it they did guess like you know maybe palpatine's been pulling all the strings um but that you know and then and then you well you were asking about fan service i mean tatooine oh yeah the tatooine ending i actually sure. the the retconning of, of I thought Baby Yoda was going to show up when they were uh they might the, the as well. sand crawlers there. Yeah. People were speculating. I'm not even I'm not even against fan service. The people that were complaining about it, I was like, "Nah, I'm I'm going to like it when that happens." Uh but no, it was like embarrassing. Mm. I mean, the Chewie getting handed the medal, I just, I just I don't know. And I mean, it was cool that Lando was back, but it was also like, "Why?" And then it asks the question, uh, then I'm like, "Well, where's he been then?" I mean, and I think they explain mm. it, but it just moves so fast yeah. that I that I didn't catch it. And like, where, why hasn't he been helping? And I don't, I don't know. I don't get, I don't get any of it. Um, <laughs> it was that festival was pretty cool. That where Lando showed up. There, there's a weird desert people ancestors festival where uh, some stormtroopers almost almost kill the heroes, and then Lando swoops in to oh, save dude, them. They fly now. Oh yeah, they, yeah. They fly now. They um, fly now. Yeah, they fly now. Um, what was cool about that festival to me, if you caught it, is three PO says that it occurs once every forty-two years, uh, and that's because it's a forty-two-year anniversary since A New Hope was released. Now I'm angry about it. I don't like it anymore. 
You don't like that little no. nugget of fan service? <laughs> um, I, I thought of another bit of fan service was uh, C-3PO needs to have his memory restored from R2-D2's archives or whatever, his, his backup. And C-3PO says, oh, R2-D2's memory is uh, famously unreliable or something stupid like that. And like, oh, yeah. yeah. All right, because because R two D two is the only one who actually remembers uh, all the events, right? I think that it was a symptom. It was symptomatic of the fact that there's never high stakes in the movie. That mm. they erase his memory, and then not much later on in the movie, they just restore it. Yeah, it's just sort of comedic like in the meantime. And I yeah. thought the way that they teased it in trailers, I thought it was going to be this whole really emotional yeah. thing. It didn't matter. And you're going to be saying goodbye to him, and they completely undercut any weight from it. Like, were they nervous that the movie was going to be too scary or like, or too, <laughs> too like, like too emotional, I should say. People are going to be having breakdowns if we, uh, if we don't, you know, restore three PO's memory within five minutes. My problem is uh, it was, it was hard to watch with the way that they deliberately undercut the value of that. Because if we didn't know that, all right, Later on, R2-D2 is going to restore his memory. It could have felt emotional for a little bit, but they actually, in the moment that it happens, they undercut it by, you know, he he says this whole thing about, you know, I'm taking one last look, you know, at my friends. And uh, the new droid, uh, D.O., goes, sad. <laughs> and then... And then, the, like, immediately. and so He was voiced like, by Donald Trump. Did you yeah, know that? Uh, and that, that was another thing that bothered me. I was like, was that seriously just, like, a, a Donald Trump Twitter response? Sad. <laughs> He's got no friends. No friends at all. No memory. I have the best memory. Sad. Uh, <laughs> I was like, why Why would they do that? Like, they, they turned their, like, um, a big emotional moment into a comedic moment. It's like mm -hmm. when they had... Carrie, like, like when they had Leia pass away, I should say, if you know, if then they had like a fart noise come out, or just, you know, I don't like. I, I just, think, I just uh, feel like why, why would they do that? That could have been really great, actually. Just as she's disappearing, yeah. they, they could make like that a new deflating, cannon. a deflating balloon yeah. sound. <laughs> That's the new <laughs> cannon for God. when you uh, become a force ghost. You. <laughs> I think that's really good. Um, let's talk about Squeaker. Force Ghost for a second because... Um, oh, yeah, buddy. They're, they're getting up to all kinds of stuff in this movie. So that's a big thing. I mean, so I feel like Ryan Johnson introduced this in The Last Jedi, whether he intentionally did it yeah. or not. But having uh, Yoda show up as a Force Ghost yeah. and kind of like hit Luke on the head with his cane and then mm. to conjure lightning that that physically struck and, and burnt that forest tree. Yeah, that's that's it, the part. Yeah. And I guess you could say that like, oh yeah, but like Obi Wan like sat on a log <laughs> in 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 Return of the Jedi. So like we knew that they could interact with the physical world. It's like, dude, they can make lightning shoot out of the sky. Now yeah. in this one, uh Luke as a force ghost comes back uh, thank God he got a moment of camera time, even though we have to see him looking all like weird, blue, mm. hazy. I felt like he was doing a little bit of like a version of his Joker <laughs> in this yeah. movie. I don't know, which everybody liked, but he, he's a great Joker. He's but he yeah. So he he shows up and completely is like, oh, remember what I said in the last movie? I was wrong. I didn't I didn't really mean it. I mean, he literally has a line where it. Oh God. I'm, well, I'm gonna move past this so we can keep talking about Force Ghost, but he he shows up and he not only can touch things in the physical world, he mm -hmm. catches the lightsaber. Yeah. Then he can also use the force. <clears throat> he lifts his X wing out of the water. Yep. And they like in a very like pandering way, they 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 play the same score that they did when Yoda uh lifted the X Wing out mm -hmm. of the swamps on Dagobah. And uh, just sort of like, remember when that happened? Yeah. And um, so he he can, he could move the physical world, like pick up objects and whatever, like touch things. He could use the force to move things. And then, so you got to question like, all right, what are the rules? Like when they, yeah. when they battle and everything, why, why? I also just thought it was weird that they seem to be just like hanging out the whole afternoon, like moving around the island and 
he's like showing her where Leia's lightsaber is hidden, and then he's uh, lifting the X wing out. Like, I don't know. Force ghosts just used to seem way more like mysterious and limited in an interesting way. Like, they are sources of wisdom that come to you at your time of need. They're not fucking superhero ghosts. Like, yeah, they might as well do a movie with just Force Ghosts. Yeah, I was we we were saying earlier like <laughs> not only why are Force Ghosts not involved in battles, like why why didn't um I guess Qui-Gon is not a Force Ghost, is he? Why why didn't Obi-Wan show up as a Force Ghost and just fight Darth Vader instead of Luke Skywalker? Like why are any living Jedi who, you know, stand to be physically harmed involved in these battles at all if force ghosts can just get in there and do the work yeah and i mean empire you know obi-wan was like hey if you confront vader like i i can't help you dude like you're you're on your own and luke's like i understand now i guess we have to read that line like he was just saying bro you on your own i'm not helping you like if you well i think maybe you could interpret it as he was like yoda's telling you not to do this so if you disobey orders like i'm not gonna help you but that would be really dickish like, and, and why would you do that? It's like, also, Obi-Wan, like, you said that you'd become more powerful uh, if you if you were struck down than, than, he, than he could ever know. Mm. Um, and, and you know, so then I then I kind of thought, well, okay, well, then, then do something in your death. You're just chilling on logs, dude. You didn't get that <laughs> powerful. Like, you got tired. You got sleepy, dude. Um, okay, so what did you think about Han showing up? Not a Force ghost, but very similar. I think I think you and I had different different opinions on this. Um, so he's a memory, um, but he is he's speaking very directly with with Ben slash Kylo Ren. That's sort of the moment when Kylo Ren stops being Kylo Ren and becomes Ben again. Um, and he's, he's he communicates a little bit with his mother, and then uh, as she saves him. Um, or, or well, really, as as she saves Ray and whatever, um, and then the memory of Han comes back to him, and they're they're having this deep conversation. Um, yeah, I, I I didn't love it. I thought it was I don't know. I I just felt like it was a little bit too much. I, maybe it's because we're in a world where you interact with with force ghosts, with actual dead people, that then this this memory should be, like, standing there as this physical person right next to him. It just felt weird. Yeah, I mean, I I was happy to see Han Solo. Um, mm-hmm. I, I was told that was going to happen in the leaks, but I almost didn't believe it because I didn't think that uh, Harrison Ford would come back. Um, I didn't mind the scene... I think to your point about it was a lot. If you think about it, it's right up against when uh, Ray is with Luke because right then she steals his uh, tie silencer. She flies to Octu, crashes it on per or like burns it up, and Luke appears. So those scenes are happening like side by side, mm-hmm. and you've got one's a memory. I mean, it was obvious that they just wanted to have everybody back, yeah. but you never get the original trio on screen at the same time. That's They're true. just in scenes like near each other. Uh, what did bother me about this scene with Han was that, yeah, it was meant to mirror the scene that they had in A Force Awakens. Um, but it was like too much with the line recycling. I mean, uh, uh, literally, Kylo Ren is like, I, I know what I have to do, uh, but, I'm, but I'm not sure how to do it. Or, or, or I'm. Worried I won't I'm, won't be able to do it. Something like that. Whatever that line is, yeah. he says it the exact same line, the exact same way, but this time instead of killing his dad with a lightsaber, he chucks it into the he chucks the lightsaber into the ocean. And I'm like, why would you repeat? Yeah. I know that like for the audience, like that's a callback, but like for talking to your dad, like that's the last thing that he heard <laughs> before he died. Is that like? Do you think that's like a cute little inside joke now that you bring up? <laughs> like. I know what I have to do. And Han's like, here you go again. Oh, boy. And, oh okay. How, like, why would you, why would, ben. I don't know. I did like, 
and I, I think this is an unpopular opinion. Um, I did like the whole sequence where Leia, uh, I didn't like the idea that she was like, I need to go die now. Mm -hmm. and I thought that that was really weird. And it's just so fast. If they mm -hmm. just did it slower, I probably could have accepted it. But I <laughs> loved I loved when um, when she shows up or hold on, let me make sure audio is still running. Yeah. Um, OK, so I love when Ben is finally about to beat Ray in a, in a fight um, and then. It's like uh, Leia's like essence or voice is like right there. And she says, like, Ben, I think. And mm -hmm. he pauses. And he's, like, so affected by hearing her. Um, kind of like how he paused in The Last Jedi when he was about to fire on her but didn't. Um, and in that moment, it I almost feel like they make it seem like like maybe Ray heard it as well. So mm. she knew what was going on. And she knew that he was distracted and in a weak moment. And she takes his lightsaber and just rams it yeah. through him. She was pretty ruthless. And I was like, yeah, well, I love that moment. Because they, they actually made it believable mm -hmm. where she has this like dark side of her that yeah. that is, if she's not careful, it's like yeah. she's like really going towards it. Which it, that to me didn't really is uh... something I think they I think they foreshadowed it. In, I mean, part of it is a bit of a retcon to be like, well, everybody wonders like how she was so powerful and like, isn't like, like she's getting her power so quickly. Like, isn't that like, isn't like the fast and easy way, like the path to the dark side. Mm. And so they kind of were like, well, look, she's Palpatine's granddaughter. And uh, yeah, she's got some dark side shit right. going on. That That's why, you know, it's fast and easy for her. Force lightning without even yeah. meaning to. That seems like dark shit. I thought that scene was cool too. The two moments where where you know she thinks she kills Chewie with Force mm -hmm. Lightning because she's just really angry and frustrated, um, and then the other scene That's where another one where like like three PO's memory getting restored. They, yeah, yeah, they they really do not treat Chewie's supposed death with much emotional weight, and then well, not that long after he's just revealed. To be oh, well, not even on that ship. He was just, just secretly on, on another ship. ship. A different that ship that we didn't see. Uh, oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it was the same thing with um, with with Ben, where she rams a lightsaber through him, and you're like, oh crap! And then she's like, nah, like I can heal that. <laughs> like, like where was she when uh, Qui Gon Jinn got yeah. stabbed the or, or anybody else? Is... The force healing is one of the major things that erases the stakes in in this movie and assuming maybe they ever do make movies that, that carry on this storyline. Yeah, I, you see, on these characters. I, I was okay with the ba Baby Yoda doing it in, in on The Mandalorian because it was like, you know, some flesh wounds. I guess it was also poisonous, but... Well, and he's, and I also he's a character in his own... <laughs> yeah, and I also thought maybe that was like something like really special that like mm -hmm. he could do. Um, but this whole like essence transfer stuff was getting very like comic book genre for me, like yeah. which Star Wars always had like a bit of, but never went completely there. Right. Because now you're like, oh, like I mean, what are they gonna do in the future? It's like, oh, I got hurt. Okay, well, I'll give you some health. Oh, now I'm hurt. Okay, I'll give I'll give you some health. And then Palpatine's like, oh, I'm old. I'll just suck the energy out of you. Like it was very Harry Potter to me. Mm. Like I'll I'll suck the life out of you and get younger and like I just I know that there is like some precedent for that sort of stuff in Star Wars, but it, it's never like beaten you over the head like that before. And yeah, it just completely erases the stakes. I mean, the whole thing where where Chewie was killed, nope, he's alive. The whole thing where she rams a sword through Ben, and then no, nope, yeah. she's gonna heal him. And and it, it, everything that's like almost really dramatic. They just reverse. Yeah. Like, I'm surprised they didn't have Leia just like wake back up and be like, "Oh man, I, that was a close one." Uh, she just reinflates. Yeah, reappears in the under the blanket. And um, so that that was a um, big issue. Like I said, it, it felt kind of Harry Potterish, and and yeah, the stakes super low. Um, I also so we we talked about how. Ray has this this potential for darkness and this like this ruthless um, like vicious violence in her, uh, which seems like an area that has a lot of potential for like a real character arc. That's that's what um, 
That's what Anakin's arc was supposed to be, and it wasn't handled very well. Um, but at least, at least it was like, at least it was an arc. At least it was developed over time, and then, you know, it went somewhere. And and even with Luke, to a lesser extent, he has to really struggle with his potential for darkness. Ray, like, was there? anything in this movie that really felt like Rey was struggling with her inner darkness? Like, the final battle, it was alluded to as though she was she was overcoming that inner darkness, but I didn't see it. Yeah, well, I guess I guess maybe it was supposed to be her being given the, the choice where she could finally be special and accept the yeah. fact that she has this great lineage, and she would take control of the galaxy i guess because apparently like he has the right to do that like <laughs> like it was just also yeah. really weird because it was like if you just say you're the emperor like are you the emperor like it's yeah. very unclear in this whole sequel trilogy like who's in charge and who's aware of who's in charge because people at that celebration didn't seem very <laughs> worried about the first order like maybe the right. first order is not all that bad other than when they oh blew my up God. That, that that planet system dude one of the worst parts of exposition dialogue was after they defeat the the fleet that apparently um palpatine just conjured he can just conjure spaceships that's a cool new force power anyway (laughs) after they defeat this fleet and defeat palpatine uh i think it's finn somebody just says um uh, people are rising up all over like (laughs) i guess uh, everyone's heard about what we did and so now all over the galaxy, uh, everyone is resisting the new order and they're going to be gone now. Like, it was literally one line of dialogue that he had no way of knowing. Like, <laughs> you literally just finished your battle and you just have, suddenly you know that all over the galaxy, everything is fixed. Yeah, I mean, uh, there are many things that they ended up just being like a quick line of dialogue as if, and yeah, it felt like, one of those scenes in a movie where someone's talking on the phone and they have to repeat everything that they're hearing so that yeah. the audience knows. Yeah. I <laughs> I feel like the, I don't something about the the movie between the pace and how like just not a whole lot happens in, in each scene and it keeps moving along and it's all exposition. It seemed like a like a PowerPoint movie. <laughs> it seemed like it was shot on PowerPoint. <laughs> like like you know like and each slide was like you know, somebody in the studio, like, their coolest idea. It was like, everybody get your coolest idea for a scene. Or actually, you know what, go go through Reddit, pick your favorite complaint about The Last Jedi... And then come up with your slide in the in the in the slideshow to you know of a cool of a cool way to to retroactively uh, uh, fix that. There's a there's a Key and Peel sketch where they're in the writers' room for Gremlins too. Yeah, <laughs> they just go around the table like, what's the, what's the first idea for a crazy Gremlin you want? Yeah. It's in the movie. Yeah, they're everybody like, gets a crazy idea. An electric Gremlin. <laughs> An electric gremlin? You are a psychopath. And guess what? It's in the movie. <laughs> like, uh, I love that. Um, but all right, yeah, I guess let's do closing thoughts on it, and then maybe we'll try to give it a, a rating, which okay. it, it's tough without seeing it again. Yeah. But all right, first time watching it through, my closing thoughts are just, you know, tying it into the PowerPoint thing. It just felt kind of uncomfortable, and it felt you know like you're watching a a powerpoint thing there was cool moments but even solo has sequences that breathe a little bit more than than this movie Mm. and i just felt like if they had taken out some of the MacGuffin search and if they had uh trimmed the fan service a bit and just allowed the audience to figure out certain things instead of all the lines of dialogue um then they would have had time to let the cooler moments in this movie breathe, and I would have liked it way more. Um, it's really weird and disappointing. Like, I'm not, you know, some certified filmmaker myself, but I just can't... I, I can't believe that J.J., like, was cool with this. I, And again, I don't think that he was. Like, from what people were leaking before, and I think that, given that the plot leaks were true, I think that a lot of the leaks surrounding the production are probably also true about there being multiple 
uh, endings that were shot in multiple like versions of things. Like I bet in an earlier version, they did have Chewbacca die, and then yeah. and then when people didn't react well to that in like test screenings or whatever, they were probably like, oh, okay, well he he was on another ship that you didn't see off screen. Like mm-hmm. that almost seems mm-hmm. obvious that that happened. And and screw them because JJ was like, no, there were no test screenings. I now I now I believe that there that there were because they lied about the plot not being leaked. It totally was. Yeah. And then the the people in the test screenings, the way that they described it was that it was a jumbled mess and people were like getting up and like trying to leave. <laughs> and I believe it because if I were in a test screening, I mean, I would have been relieved that this wasn't the finished product, but I would have just been like if if I if I didn't feel like it was my duty as a Star Wars fan to like make it to the end and see how it turns out, um, I would have changed the channel probably. <laughs> this is a really rough review. But, all right, your turn. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, like I said, the the visuals on uh, on Exegol uh, uh, were were really cool. Um. I mean. Like Star Wars, Star Wars has done that. Uh, the like face lit up by different light, and it shows you um, different angles and whatever. Like that, that's kind of an iconic uh, part of the Star Wars visuals. But I, I thought they kind of took it to a new level. The like weird strobing lightning um, on everybody's faces just looked badass. Uh, so that's my favorite part. And everything else was kind of a mess. Um, yeah, I, I would, I would still recommend going to see this movie, but like you can walk out. I think I feel like go and see the movie, and then just walk out at some point when you're bored. Uh, yeah, because there are parts of it that are cool and fun, worth seeing. Definitely go see it. I mean, I, I'm gonna go see it again. Like I'm. I, there's a chance that maybe it'll grow on me, but I think mm. that there's a lot of parts of it that yeah. y- you have to look past or you have to just swallow. The exposition. Um, just... Somebody had said online that they felt like it was it was really insulting to to Ryan mm. Johnson, um, and I I do. There were moments where I was like, really, like, yeah. damn, like you're just like, oh, that there... thing in the Last Jedi. No, that that's not really true. I I feel like it was pretty explicitly anti the last jedi and if you hated the last jedi then like you might like this movie just for the fact that like right. it retcons a bunch of things and like quote unquote fixes characters wow. uh what i think is really ironic is that i think a lot of people overnight now appreciate the last jedi a lot more because they they see how, what it looks like when disney actually pays attention to like your ideas and stuff on on reddit and like how you think it should have been and they they made a movie out of it. So how are we? Uh, how are we gonna rank this? Out of ten? Yeah, out of ten. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna sandwich it. I get. I'll just I'll just put it in context. Empire. I would give a nine. It's a great yeah. movie. Uh, Attack of the Clones. Five. Okay. And. Rise of the Rise of Skywalker, I'd give it a six. It's like a hair better than Attack yeah. of the Clones in my mind. You know what? Um, and then I'm just gonna cut it right there and not tell you, just like Finn when he says to Ray that he needs to tell her something and then never does. <laughs> but no, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a six as well. Um, <clears throat> I think that I think that 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 is where it lands. Um, I think it's a little bit better than Attack of the Clones. Visually, you know, way better, but story wise, I mean, it just as jumbled. Yeah. It, 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 and that's 60%. actually percent. Yeah. When D-minus, you think about it like that, that, like in, in, in a movie's ability to tell a story um, and just how they, they present it, the execution, I, I feel like it's like slightly better than Attack of the Clones. Yeah. Not even as good as Revenge of the Sith. I think Sith. aspects of it were way worse than Attack of the Clones, but it had enough charm yeah. to to overcome that a little bit. Yeah. I wish they had recycled I don't like sand. <laughs> or I, I, yeah. I hate sand. I hate, yeah, they should have they recycled every other line from other movies. Um 
But all right. Uh, thank you guys if you actually listen to all of this. Uh, I'm sure that we'll have a lot more thoughts on this. Maybe we'll do a follow-up. Um, in the meantime, we've got lots of Star Wars content on the website. I know you just wrote oh, some yeah, stuff. Oh, yeah, boy. Uh, I wrote an article. A lot of people are saying uh, that Rise of Skywalker is the worst Star Wars movie of all time. Obviously, we just said that we disagree. But uh, I wrote an article. It's going up tomorrow. It's called uh, Cats is the worst Star Wars movie yet. So be sure to check that out. Um, also I have one on deep fake George Lucas, which whether you read the article or not, you have to go check out the deep fake George Lucas. Uh, the, the newest video is uncanny. It's it's ridiculous. Um, he's, he's camping out and talking to tourists. Yeah, yeah, from the folks on, the on Collider. Um, really good yeah, stuff. they're great. Yeah, and I wrote some, uh, there's some, Mandalorian review store stuff that uh, you can find on the website. So go to popdis.com, uh, slap like, subscribe, all that. Let us know your thoughts on uh, the rise of Skywalker and the the state of the Star Ooh. Wars fandom. And let us know what you thought of the uh, that lesbian kiss at the end there. Oh yeah, that's controversial. I got an article uh, coming out about that Sunday or Monday as well. Sweet. All right. Well, thank you guys and. Uh, Talk to you in the comments.